So I've been casting a lot lately. We're uh, late fall here in New York. Uh, been doing a lot of casting to get heads ready for paint and uh, give me what I need to do my uh, tying throughout the winter to restock the inventory for my springtime sales. So as I'm standing here doing this, I thought I'd get the camera out and just do a short little clip here discussing uh, gate cutters, screw cutters, wire cutters, uh, dikes, whatever you want to call them, uh, and what's best to use. Over the years, I've used uh, everything from regular wire cutters, um, cheap Harbor Freight, uh, flush cutters, uh, you know, even went for even for a time I would just use a, a tiny skinning knife um, for smaller jigs and just kind of get that sprue off. But what we're talking about is cutting off the part that's left over from the mold um, where it goes in. A lot of people look for something that they can cut all the way through. You know, just put it on and cut and cut it right off. That does an okay job. It leaves a little bit of a ridge. Even though I'm using uh, cutters that are designed to cut flush. Um, these are small uh, micro cutters that are used um, often in doing printed circuit boards and, and cutting the uh, soldered uh, points on those. The whole idea behind it though isn't real. I'm not really looking for anything to cut all the way through the lead. I bite into it. You know, I can feel that I've I've actually uh, started cutting, but then I just give my hand a, a twist, cuts it off a little bit more cleanly. I still go back with all my jigs and uh, file down the mold line. Some guys get really upset about that. Um, I th believe it's part of the process, um, and it's hasn't bothered me at all. So it's the same thing with these larger 3/8 flat heads as I would do with this 1 8th football head. I just kind of hold it and give it a twist, comes right off. So with these smaller heads, it's the same process. I just kind of bite into the lead and give it a twist. If I really want to, like I said, you can cut right through it. But that just give it's that leaves a ridge. It really does. Um, I'm not saying that biting into it and giving it a twist doesn't leave any type of uh, rough surface um, because it does. Uh, so I still go back through and actually file it. But I think it does a better job than cutting all the way through. You know, I wasn't kidding when I said I've, I've used a whole bunch. These four. Or what I have on my bench that I use every day. The Crescent flush cutters, you find these in a pack along with some uh, needle nose pliers, some micro pliers. These are my all time favorite. I've been using these for uh, a couple years now, haven't felt the need to switch them up. Uh, the edge is feels just as good as it did when I opened the package and I really like the Crescent brand uh, micro cutters. So the Crescent brand being my all-time favorite. Uh, a close second and this is a pair that I've used a few years before I happened to find the Crescent. The Exolite, they're made in the USA. Uh, the 170M flush cutters are really darn close. Even the handle material aside from the color is very close to the Crescent and uh, the Crescent brand and really like these useful really useful um, I have a pair of Milwaukee's here these actually are, are pretty heavy duty if I have a thick piece of lead that I do want to cut straight through I'll go to um, either the Milwaukee's because they're decent um, or these Kleins um, I will add the Milwaukee's and the Kleins, you're going to be paying a little bit more than 
what's typical uh, for these. This type of cutter is used a lot in manufacturing, particularly with printed circuit boards. So they're fairly inexpensive because they're considered, I, I believe, they're considered like a throwaway tool, almost like buying X-Acto knife blades. Others that I have on my workbench that I do keep around, if I, if I have a job that I, I need to abuse the tool a little bit, these are the ones I'll reach for. This black handled pair is from a typical hardware store. I think it may be a true value or something. It was just kind of a no name brand. Um, they work okay. Uh, the plastic handles are smooth and kind of slippery. Um, and I just don't, you know, the feel that when you're, when you're doing a few hundred of these at a time, they're just okay in my eyes. Here, this red handled pair again, hard plastic. These are made in India. They work well. Uh, Harbor Freight, I think, I believe is where I got these. Probably under $3 for both of these. You know, so if you don't mind spending three bucks every once in a while, using them until they're no good and tossing them in the can, that they'll, they'll work just perfect for you. Um, the uh, Crescent brand along with the uh, micro pliers that come with this uh, is $12 I think it was at uh, Lowe's or Home Depot probably Lowe's and uh, I've had this long enough where you know the cost of roughly six dollars totally fine um, here is the um, the crescent needle nose pliers that come with this so we'll come in a set of two both with the orange handle and this just a nice little micro plier. Another example of a flush cut wire cutter, micro cutter, uh, they might be called. Um, this is just Craftsman. Uh, I picked these up now at uh, Lowe's. And you can use wire cutters. Uh, here's channel lock, regular wire cutters. Uh, this is a uh, Ampro. This is just a cheap, heavy duty pair of wire cutters I picked up. Uh, at like a dollar store or something. I was uh, cutting plastic coated wire with these. So that's why I have these. Um, again, old um, Craftsman wire cutters and they work. You know, I can use these to to cut that off as well. But it's not as delicate. It's not as clean. You know, it'll cut through it if you really need a longer handle so you can use the leverage to go through the lead. Works just fine. These Craftsman little micro wire cutters uh, with, the, with the flush cut side. That works too. There you go. So I guess I won't be finishing my coffee. But, uh... Just wanted to throw my hat in the ring, put in my two cents on what works and what doesn't on this ongoing discussion of what the best sprue cutters are. And of course, you know, if you're spin casting and you have to cut the hub of the wheel uh, from your mold, of course, you're going to use something a little bit more um, beefy. You know, you'll, you'll go to something like this as opposed to these micro cutters. But if you're using uh, do it molds, or custom aluminum molds flush cut wire cutters is what you want to go for so I have my preferences um, mainly I like the feel uh, that's what I'm judging them on the feel and the longevity uh, that I'm using them so uh, cost doesn't have to be the main factor if you just want something cheap go ahead and pick up the Harbor Freight ones you use them for six months to a year and you throw them away and you spend another three bucks to, to replace them. If you want to spend a little bit more, uh, it can't go wrong with Milwaukee or Klein, but you're going to pay top dollar and then it just comes down to preference. So if you want more content on the tools and materials used in casting, painting and tying jigs, uh, let me know. Just add something down in the comment section. 
Uh, I would definitely would be happy to talk about and answer questions that come up. Anything that has to do with uh, jig making. As always, hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any new content. Keep fluxing your lead, and until next time, tight lines.